I'm going to derive the law of cosines, and as I go, I'm going to do it both in general and in a numerical example. So here's the situation. We've got two sides and the included angle known. That's an SAS situation. So that's what I've got drawn up here, but I've got a lot of extra decoration. What's known is just this whole side A, this whole side B, so that's 10 and 6 in the numerical example that I'll show, and their included angle C, which I picked to be 60 degrees to make the numbers work out nicely, but in general, it doesn't have to be any particular special angle. So it's S, A, S, and I want to get the third side. Once I get that third side, I can use um, all kinds of stuff. I can use law of sines. I can use other good stuff to get the angles in this triangle. But this, what I'm really focusing on is how would you get the third side from an SAS situation. So the key, if you want to do it as a multi-step procedure, and we're going to do that and then sort of see how that can be shortcut, and that's going to invent the law of cosines for us, is to drop a perpendicular. Always think about dropping a perpendicular, and that gets right triangles into it. So that divides it into this right triangle and this right triangle. Very similar to the der derivation of law of sines, we're just going to think about it in a little different way because we have different information. Okay, so the first thing we can do is find the height of that triangle, or in other words, the length of that side that's common to the two right triangles. It's got to be important. Okay, so h over 6, opposite over hypotenuse, is sine of 60 degrees. That happens to be a nice number, relatively nice number here, and so h is 3 root 3. If we want the decimal, it's sitting there right here. It's about 5.19. Okay. So, um, in general, what's going to happen here, let's write out the, the, the formula. h, we got it by multiplying the 6 by the sine 60. That's just going to be b sine c. Okay, so that's a good start. So now, in this right triangle, if I could only get this side, I'd be good. Okay, I don't have a lot of hope of getting this angle or this angle or this angle or the whole angle at A yet because I've only got one angle to play with. But if I could get Y, since I have H, I can just use Pythagoras to get C. And it's not that hard to get Y because I know the whole side A. If I could just get X, then I can just subtract that off and get Y. Oh, okay, I can totally get X, because X is in this left-hand triangle, and that's the situation I want to be in. I have the hypotenuse, I have an angle. This right triangle, I can know everything about it if I want, including X. Okay, so X over 6 is going to be cosine of 60 degrees. That happens to be 1 half in this case. Okay, and so X is 6 times 1 half, or 3. In general, x is just going to be cosine c. Or it's going to be b times cosine c. I didn't say the b twice. Okay, so that's good. And now, the y is easy to find. It's just 10 minus, uh, 10 minus 3 is 7. Okay, so that confirms what, we, what this sketch pad is showing us here. h is 5.12, x is about 3. I didn't get the numbers exactly right because it's hard to get sketch pad in a precise numerical configuration. y is equal to 7. Pretty soon, we're going to see this. Oh yeah, and here's the sine c and cosine c that I've used. That's the root 3 over 2, and that's the 0.5, the 1 half. Okay, so what's the general formula? y equals, and here it gets a little more complicated. I take a, and I subtract off that b cosine c. Okay, I'm almost done. Okay, now just use Pythagoras. Okay, so c squared is going to be h squared plus y squared. Okay, in this case, that's pretty nice. h was, I could use the decimal, but, you know, it's going to look work out rather prettily because I picked that angle to be 60 degrees if I just realized that's 3 root 3 squared. Kind of special, but I think it's kind of nice. And then y was just 7 squared. 3 root 3 squared, that's that squared times that squared. 9 times 3 is 27. Square it out if you don't believe me. And we get 76. And C is just going to be the square root of 76. Can I take a, I think I can take a 2 out of that sucker. That's going to be 2 root 19. Okay, let's get the decimal for that. And just double check that I haven't done anything wrong, because the sketch pad is telling me this should be 8.72. Aha, looking good. Okay, so now let's go back and see. 
I, again, I'd say that if this is your only goal in life to find C and then not put this into a more complicated situation, there's not much point in doing anything else. It's, it's a nice sort of three or four step procedure and we're good. But it's really nice that there is a way to shortcut this and there's a beautiful formula that comes out of it. So let's look at this last bit, C squared equals H squared plus Y squared. Okay, and just put in the formulas for those guys. That was B sine C quantity squared plus A minus B cosine C quantity squared. Okay, now we're going to leave it is in a form that it mentions C squared explicitly because the last thing, there's no way to really shortcut the last thing, I'll tell you that, is taking the square root. So what we're going to end up with is something with squares. And that's okay, because Pythagoras you usually memorize in terms of a relationship between squared length. And what we're really general, what we're really deriving is a generalization of Pythagoras. And we'll talk more about how to think of it in relationship to Pythagoras. So we could say, okay, we're done. That's good. It's a little bit weird and ugly and asymmetrical looking, but hey, what the heck? Let's, let's, let's leave it. But there's a big hint we should be able to do more with it. We've got sine and inside a square and cosine inside a square. There's a big formula involving sine squared and cosine squared. In fact, that too comes from Pythagoras. So let's do a little algebra. This is the part that usually, when I have people discover this on their own, this is usually the part I have to help people with because it's just a little messy and it's not obvious it's going to do anything nice until you really go for it. But that's really good. a good, a good lesson with algebra is try it out. Play with it and hope that it will be nice. So now, stare at it for a second, pause the video, and see if you see how this is going to simplify really nicely. We've got b squared sine, sine squared c and b squared cosine squared c. Oh, so the b squared is just multiplying our favorite thing in the world. Okay, and then what's left over is plus an a squared. Oh, that's not such a bad thing to see. The square of one of the original lengths of the triangle. And a nice little miracle occurs. We did this rather asymmetrically by dropping the perpendicular to side A. I could have run it all with dropping the perpendicular to side B and maybe would have gotten a different looking formula. But if you do the algebra here, the, asymm the asymmetry disappears. I've got the A squared, sine squared C plus cosine squared C equals one. Boom. And then the rest of it is minus two AB cosine C. And that's the law of cosines. One side, squared is equal to the sum of the other squares, just like Pythagoras, but with a modification based on what that angle C is. Note that if C was a 90 degree angle, its cosine would be zero, this would all die, and we'd recover Pythagoras. That's a really, really important check to see that we're, we're probably on the right track. Okay, so how would we do our numerical example with that? The shortcut is just, I would put in that A, 10 squared, the B, six squared, minus 2 times 10 times 6 times cosine of, let me pull that 60 degrees down. I want to get that degree mark and it's easier to just copy and paste. Uh, and if I can just get back to the right place. Okay. And so that's going to be 100. Well, let's say 136 minus, ooh, and I didn't put the B in. That was a 6. Minus, let's see, 120 times and the cosine 60 happened to be nice, because I picked it to be nice, but in general it's just going to be a decimal. And that's 136 minus 60, and that's 76. And that's what we had before. And then we just need to square root it to finish it off just like the last time. So that's all you really end up having to do in this problem once you know the law of cosines. But it's really the real reason, or a nice derivation anyway, is that it really comes from our basic idea of divide and conquer make right triangles, and put the pieces back together. It's just that when you put the pieces back together, a very, very nice thing happens, and a lot of the seeming complication goes away.